Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Downey and today I am finally releasing the video I said I would release about a month back. And this is a continuation on the video about the medication you should take if you are using steroids. So in this video I said I was going to discuss mineralocorticoids and the mineralocorticoid receptor, which I'll refer to as the MR in this video. The reason I think this is quite an important topic, and most of this video will be a hypothesis because the research behind it is still mostly in vivo, but the reason I thought this topic would be important is because it explains why ARBs and ACE inhibitors like Tomasartan and Anapril, it explains why they don't work 100%. And what I mean by this is that we have studies demonstrating that in testosterone-induced hypertension, ACE inhibitors and ARBs do work well. However, they only suppress about 60% of the effect. I mentioned this in the previous video. And when looking at clients, some individuals have this resistant hypertension tension induced by steroids, anabolic steroids, and it doesn't resolve even with high dose ARBs or ACE inhibitors along with possibly a beta blocker. And so I sought out to find a possible hypothesis as to why ACE inhibitors and ARBs aren't fully effective and it led me to create this hypothesis that mineralocorticoids and their receptors are very important in the pathogenesis behind androgenic steroid induced hypertension. So I'm going to be referring to this pathway a lot in the video, but essentially if we look on the left of this image, you'll see from progesterone all the way down to aldosterone, not including progesterone, these are your mineralocorticoids, and that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. And as you can see at the top, cholesterol under the stimulus of ACTH com is converted to pregnenolone, then progesterone, then deoxycorticosterone, and so on and so forth. So mineralocorticoids, not surprisingly, work at the mineralocorticoid receptor. The most famous mineralocorticoid being aldosterone. Its actions are most notable in the kidney. It causes sodium retention and loss of potassium and through this, it works to increase one's blood pressure through the act of increasing extracellular fluid volume. But this receptor exists elsewhere. It exists in the brain, in the heart, as well as on just blood vessels. And it's been postulated that the mineralocorticoid receptors found in the brain, more specifically in the hippocampus, their stimulation is involved in the pathogenesis behind Alzheimer's disease or just dementia in general. But again, that's also quite hypothetical. But what is demonstrated quite evidently in the literature is that stimulation of the mineralocorticoid receptor results in cardiac fibrosis. And that's why something like spironolactone, which is a MR receptor antagonist, is used in those suffering from heart failure and is considered a remodeling agent. Furthermore, stimulation of the MR is implicated in many other diseases such as aortic dissection, peripheral vascular disease, and the list goes on. But what does this have to do with steroids? Well, I'm going to demonstrate how testosterone and by proxy anabolic steroids influence this pathway. And again, the reason I call this a hypothesis is because the research is quite limited. Research done quite a while ago looking specifically at testosterone and in a future study, 19 nor testosterone, demonstrated that there was a drastic increase in deoxycorticosterone levels in these rats that were given testosterone. And not surprisingly, these rats also had hypertension. In a separate study, they administered deoxycorticosterone acetate to rats to see if this compound could be implicated in hypertension. Needless to say, they found that in these rats given deoxycorticosterone, and acetate, they all had hypertension, but not only that, 
cardiac fibrosis as well as fibrosis in the kidneys. So what is deoxycorticosterone? Well, this is the molecule that I'm going to center my hypothesis around. Going back to this pathway, if we look at the left again with the mineralocorticoids, we see deoxycorticosterone right under progesterone. And this is converted by an enzyme called 11-beta-hydroxylase to corticosterone and then aldosterone. So does deoxycorticosterone have the same activity as aldosterone? Whilst it's not as potent as aldosterone at stimulating the MR, it still has similar activities and can result in salt retention and cardiac fibrosis. But how does testosterone cause this effect? Well, they were also a bit confused by this, and they found that when doing biopsies of the adrenal glands, there was a decrease in intracytoplasmic inclusions of this enzyme called 11 beta hydroxylase. Not only that, this deficiency caused by testosterone has also been shown in bovine adrenal mitochondria. Again, this hasn't really been shown in humans as of yet, but when looking at individuals on long-term testosterone, we do have one study that shows there is a decrease in corticosterone immediately after administration of testosterone. So this could indicate that there is a decrease in 11-beta-hydroxylase because that's needed for deoxycorticosterone to be converted into corticosterone. Not only that, further possible support of the 11-beta-hydroxylase deficiency hypothesis also is supported by the fact that testosterone in the majority of studies has been shown to decrease circulating cortisol levels. So this again would support that hypothesis because 11 deoxycortisol requires 11-beta-hydroxylase to be converted to cortisol. So overall, what I'm demonstrating from this is that deoxycorticosterone increases drastically with exogenous testosterone administration. And this also can be in part explained by the fact that in humans it's been demonstrated that testosterone increases ACTH. And the reason ACTH is increased is because testosterone decreases through mechanisms unknown ACTH's end action, such as production of cortisol. So again, this would also suggest that there is a buildup in precursors. So what does deoxycorticosterone excess look like in a human? Well, we actually have individuals who suffer from a congenital adrenal hyperplasia where they might have a 21 hydroxylase deficiency or more rarely 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. And essentially what this leads to in those suffering from the 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency is a mineralocorticoid hypertension, as well as young age onset of cardiac fibrosis and renal disease, more specifically chronic kidney disease. Furthermore, if we look at exogenous administration of DOC or deoxycorticosterone, it increases LDL accumulation in the aorta and the heart, as well as circulating LDL levels and decrease HDL levels. This is a picture that is also seen in those abusing androgenic steroids. What was interesting in the study looking at 19 nor testosterone and how it created hypertension, it was found that the hypertensive effects were not as great. However, there was a creation of a byproduct called 19 deoxycorticosterone or nor deoxycorticosterone, and this seemed to have a very high affinity for vascular MRs. Again, this is a small study done in rats, but could implicate 19 nor testosterone derivatives as being more damaging to vascular tissue. So in summary, the hypothesis is that testosterone or steroids by proxy inhibit 11-beta-hydroxylase, and this results in a buildup of something like deoxycorticosterone. And deoxycorticosterone actually does have activity. Whilst it is a weak mineralocorticoid, it still has the ability to work at the mineralocorticoid receptor. And this could explain 
the reason why ARBs or ACE inhibitors only are only 60% efficient because there is another mechanism behind testosterone induced hypertension. This may lead you to ask, so what do I do to prevent this? And it might lead you to conclude that you need to use a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist when using high doses of steroids. The problem is MR antagonists come with a lot of side effects. However, the benefits might outweigh those risks of the side effects in those with resistant hypertension. Another question you might have for me is, at what dose does testosterone have these effects? And the problem is that multiple different doses were used in rats in these studies, but we can assume that it is likely superphysiological dosages that would have these deleterious effects. Anyway, I've done a lot of speaking, and I'm very interested to hear from you guys what you think about this topic, what you think about the hypothesis, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.